Class is now in session, I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the game between the Sharks and the Golden Knights, in which the Sharks have lost 3-1. to one. This concludes, in fact, the season series between the Sharks and Golden Knights, surprisingly, before the end of December, as the Sharks end up going 1-3 and three against potentially their top rivals on the year. So, not so great, but I guess it's really not a surprise considering how the Sharks have been playing for the majority of this season. So this one started off unlike the first couple. It was actually the Sharks getting dominated in the first period. The Golden Knights had the the vast, you know, the lion's share of chances. But in the end, it would actually be 0-0 after the first 20 minutes. And the Sharks would improve from there. Even though in the second period, the Sharks would remain scoreless. And it would be the Golden Knights getting the first goal pretty later on by Paul Stasny to make it 1-0 after 40. The Sharks, as I said, they looked slightly better and when you take uh, into account the fact that the Sharks have looked quite bad in the second and third periods in the past few games it was nice to see especially in the third period as well they began to actually look pretty decent offensively they got the early tying goal from Logan Couture to make it 1-1 before it would be Shea Theodore who would eventually end up with a game winner there to make it 2-1 and a dagger from Jonathan Marsh so in just the last few minutes as he got Uh, as they managed to, I believe it was Riley Smith who managed to get around Eric Carlson, get this pass through to Marsh so who couldn't be covered by Mark Edward Vlasic, and so the Knights would win. In fact, the Sharks would actually get a late power play for the third straight game with the goaltender pulled and again failed to score on that, so the power play at least continues to be pretty inconsistent here for the San Jose Sharks, but I guess the small bit of good news is that the Sharks continue to avoid being shut out this season, For which for a team that really has been struggling to score for the majority of this year, finds themselves near the bottom of the league in terms of goals for per game. It's kind of weird that they actually haven't been shut out this season. I mean, the amount of one-goal games is probably in- enormous, at least in comparison to the rest of the NHL, but at least you should know going into a Sharks game that the Sharks will at the very least score one, but with their goaltending, usually that one will never be enough. First thing to talk about would be, in fact, the goaltending Arundel would get the call here tonight, which wasn't a surprise, obviously, as Martin Jones got the game yesterday here in this back-to-back. And both Jones and Dell, of course, both led in three goals. So from an outsider perspective, it would look like both just played pretty bad games. But obviously, the circumstances were extremely different. Martin Jones, as I said, with that one goal to Jordan Cairo was just not a very good game for Jones. But here tonight for Dell... I had mentioned my goal saved above average stat, my goal, my stat, the stat goal saved, uh, saved above average stat. In the previous video, I said that, you know, Jones was quite below the the stat line, but here tonight, I would suspect Dell would be above it. The average goaltender likely would have been letting in four, maybe five goals, because even though Dell let in the three here, these were very, very difficult saves, and Dell actually made a couple of monumental saves for the Sharks. He had a great glove save on Stone. He had another great save on Stone in the second period, a few massive saves in the third period. We saw him make a nice five-hole save on Shea Theodore, which was important to see after the Cairo goal just the other night, and so Dell has been performing well pretty well in his last few starts and when the Sharks come back from the holiday break they will have a yet another back-to-back Friday and Saturday so we should see Jones and Dell although maybe if Dell gets that game against the Kings which is the Friday game he may even get the following one depending but this could be a chance for Dell to actually sort of usurp Jones as a potential starter at least for the foreseeable future very it's very possible that by the end of the year if the Sharks somehow find themselves in the playoff position Martin Jones might be able to get that starting job back but for now, it seems as though Dell in the past few games has just plain and objectively been better than Martin Jones through the majority of the time. And so it'll be interesting to see how this goaltending battle moves forward after the holiday break. The main thing I want to talk about in this video is the state of the team. Of course, as I said, holiday break coming up. We're almost halfway through the season. The Sharks find themselves almost double-digit points out of the play- out of a playoff spot. So it's not looking all too good. The Sharks only have a single win here near the end of December in this month. And so there isn't really a lot to look forward to. But, you know, to try and keep things positive, you don't want to be sad over Christmas. Uh, this Christmas break. This could be... a good time for the Sharks. Four days off, you're spending time with the family, maybe a moment to recharge, and you might be saying, well, the Sharks had three days off last week. That's technically true, but that's mostly just three 
days without a game, right? They played Tuesday, they played Saturday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no games, but they did practice. These are basically mandatory days off here over Christmas, so you're with your family, you're recharging. Maybe the Sharks can fly out of the gates because there are, even though the Sharks have just continued to struggle under Bob Booner, there are still some positives here. We have seen moments where the offense has gotten rolling, even if it hasn't been nearly consistent. We have seen, you know, flashes of some solid defensive play. Obviously, Vlasic and Carlson have had moments, although tonight they were shaky at times. Burns has looked, you know, somewhat better, I would say, in the past couple of games. Maybe Shemek can come back from injury and we won't have to deal with Jacob Middleton anymore. So that could be some good news. Uh, as I said, Aaron Dell has looked like the better goaltender and has actually looked at least somewhat average here for the San Jose Sharks. So there are pieces floating around and if the Sharks can somehow manage to put them all together, there could be something here. Obviously, it's a cliche at this point to continue to mention the fact that the Blues were last place in the NHL come the start of January and they ended up winning the Stanley Cup. But, you know, anything is possible even if the stats don't really support here the Sharks so obviously they are seemingly on the way to missing the playoffs but maybe maybe something can happen here it's 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 I guess important to try and keep their your hopes high but that will do it for this review the Sharks will be back in action uh, on Friday and they will face off against the Los Angeles Kings a team the Sharks actually have had some pretty strong success here this season against as you know one of the few teams who are actually at the same level in terms of points as the San Jose Sharks and so maybe a win there could be a decent confidence booster going in to the final stretch here I guess it's not the final stretch as they'll move up to the all-star game in about a month but to try and turn things around on the year Class dismissed.